welcome to week 4 topic 1 we have already discussed sample distribution of means and standard error of means in our earlier modules now in the first topic of this week we will discuss difference between two statistics that is whether there is a significant difference exists between two means of two different sample drawn from the same population let us understand the whole concept with the help of an example consider a random sample of 18 years girls and 18 year boys preparing for joint entrance examinations whether they differ significantly in critical thinking ability as we know population of 18 years boys and 18 year girls are very large so we need to make a random sample of boys and girls separately let the mean score of boys is 62 girls is 58 there is a difference of 4 between the sample mean of boys and the girls what conclusion can be drawn from this data can we say critical thinking ability of 18 years boys and 18 years girls are better than that in this case you have to note that we need to consider sampling error that is fluctuation of sample before drawing any conclusion remember difference between two sample is significant if and only if there is a high probability that such differences cannot attributed to chance of sampling error or sampling fluctuation even if population mean of 18 years boys is equal to the population mean of 18 years girls when we draw two samples of such boys and girls separately the mean will be different if we draw two another samples there will be some difference between the two means if we draw another two sample again you find that there is some difference between the two mean on repeating the process for a large number of samples you find that all the time there will be some difference between the two samples drawn from the same population this difference arises in each case may be positive that is greater than the mean of the population may be negative that is less than the mean of the population may be zero that is equal to the population mean the distribution of these differences will form a normal distribution around the difference zero this shows that difference between two sample means are normally distributed the standard deviation of this distribution is called standard error of difference between the means the standard deviation that is standard error of difference between the two mean is mathematically represented by se m1 minus m2 which is equal to standard error of difference between the two means divided by standard deviation of the difference between the two means we have already discussed that difference between the means are normally distributed therefore almost all sample means lie within plus minus 3 sed standard error of difference we need to study whether the obtained difference that is the calculated difference is significant or not at a particular level of significance we need to discuss how to test whether the obtained difference between the two sample means are significant or not at a particular level of significance there are several steps let us discuss each step separately step one first set up the null hypothesis it is already known to you how to set up the null hypothesis in the present example our null hypothesis states that mean of the population of the boys is equal to mean of the population of the girls that is there is no significant difference between the population means of 18 years boys and 18 years girls that is population means of boys minus population mean of girls is equal to zero where we can say that the difference is zero the difference between the population mean of 18 years boys and 18 years girls is zero if mu1 represents 
population mean of boys mu2 represents population means of girls in the present case null hypothesis states that mu1 is equal to mu2 that is mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0 let us discuss the step 2 calculation of standard error of difference between the mean this has to be taken up separately depending upon the size of the sample that is the first thing second thing is the nature of the sample see it is very important to consider the size of the sample and the nature of the sample considering the size of the sample in case of large sample n is greater than 30 in case of small sample n is smaller than 30 considering the nature of the sample maybe for independent mean maybe for correlated mean now let us consider in case of large sample n is greater than 30 standard error of difference between the means is equal to sem1 that is square of sem1 plus square of sem2 root over where sem1 standard error of mean of first sample is equal to sigma1 by n1 root over sem2 is equal to sigma2 by root over of n2 so standard error of difference between the two means is equal to sigma 1 by root over of n1 whole square plus sigma 2 by root over of n2 whole square whole root over on simplification you find that sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 root over when these two groups of sample are drawn from the same population standard deviation of the population is denoted by sigma that is there is no difference between the standard deviation of two samples that is standard error of difference between the two mean is equal to square of standard deviation by n1 plus square of standard deviation by n2 root over which is equal to square of the standard deviation bracket 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 bracket close on simpli simplification you will see that standard error of difference between the mean is equal to sigma root over of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 in case of small sample where n is less than 30 there are two possibilities the first possibility if the independent spores of two different groups of sample are given in such case standard error of difference between the two mean is equal to square of the deviation of first sample that is sum of x1 square plus sum of x2 square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 into 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 whole root of so x1 is equal to x1 minus m1 score minus mean that is deviation of each score of the first sample from the mean of the first sample similarly x2 is equal to x2 minus m2 deviation of the score of each sample from the mean of the second sample case 2 in second case if the mean and standard deviation of both groups are given this is another possibility this is the second possibilities mean of the group is given standard deviation of the groups are also given in such case sigma 1 is equal to sum of x1 square by n1 minus 1 that is degree of freedom n1 minus 1 similarly sigma 2 square is equal to sum of x1 square by n1 minus 2 x1 square is equal to sigma 1 square into n1 minus 1 x2 square is equal to sigma 2 square into n2 minus 1 let us substitute these values in our formula you will find standard error of difference between the two mean is equal to sigma 1 square 
into n1 minus 1 plus sigma 2 square into n2 minus 1 divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 into 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 root over of the whole. Let us come to step 3. Here we have to take a decision on the level of significance that is degree of confidence at which level of significance we are going to test whether the two means are significant or not. That is whether to take up 95% level of confidence or 99% confidence level. The next step is we have to decide whether it is a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. For example, if we simply consider whether the difference is significant, in this case we need to go for two-tailed test. But if our question is whether the mean of the sample of the boys is smaller than the mean of the sample of the girls or mean of the sample of the boys is greater than the mean of the sample of the girls, in this case we have to go for one-tailed test. It is very important to consider whether the test is one-tailed or a two-tailed. The next step that is step 5, expression of the difference in terms of standard error of difference with respect to the size of the population. The moment it is the size of the population, let us first consider in case of large sample where n is greater than 30. We need to calculate z score that is the z value. z is equal to d by SED standard error of difference where d represents mod of m1 minus m2. m1 that is population mean of boys minus population mean of girls. In case of la small sample where n is less than 30, we need to calculate d by SED. Here the value is called the t value, t distribution. That is t is equal to d by SED, standard error of difference. The d is remains the same, that is mod of m1 minus m2. That is population mean of boys minus population means of girls. Now the next step is very important to find the critical value from the table. In case of z value, we need to find the critical value. In case of t value, we need to get the critical value from table. Next step is comparison of the calculated value with the critical value. This is very important to take a decision whether to accept the null hypothesis or to reject the null hypothesis and interpret whether the obtained difference is significant or not. If the obtained value that is the calculated value is greater than equal to the critical value, the difference is significant, null hypothesis is rejected. That is there is significant difference between the two sample means. If the obtained value that is the calculated value is smaller than equal to the critical value, the difference is not significant. Null hypothesis is accepted. The moment we are accepting the null hypothesis, this shows that there is no significant difference between the two sample means. In the next topic, we shall take up some of the practice questions pertaining to large sample as well as small sample separately. Now, applications of these steps are very important with some of the examples separately for the small sample as well as large samples. You are now going to respond to the forum questions, review the documents that are there in the resource space and finally assess yourself with the help of some of the reflective questions that are given at the end of the module. I wish you all the best.